So let's think about risks in managing partners. Well, the biggest one is what I call impedance mismatch. And again, I've been talking about this a couple of times in this lecture. In a startup, you barely register on a large company's radar. In fact, your entire company's staff is probably less than the administrative staff of the CEOs of some of these companies. And the longest of the partner's schedules become your longest item. And what does that mean? Well, I've seen many times large companies say, well, we'll make that decision when we get to our planning meeting. And then you ask, well, when's the planning meeting? Oh, we have that quarterly. Well, quarterly, 90 days to start up is like, wow, we make decisions in an hour and a half. And so now all of a sudden, the longest of their meeting and decision schedules becomes your longest item. And if you're working like startups should, on an intense speed and tempo, they are now slowing you down. The third thing is, when you're using strategic alliances or joint ventures, there's no clear ownership of the customer. And in fact, if there's any owner at all, the large company will say, oh, you know, we have a thousand people in the field. Don't worry, we'll take care of this. But what you typically never realize is your product to those thousand people in the field might be a little asterisk on page 49 of their sales price list. And again, when you do joint ventures, you've got to make sure who owns the vision because products by committee are probably the worst thing that could happen to a startup. And your objectives tend to differ. You need to understand what happens in a large company when you become part of the partnership. Were you there as a checklist item that someone said, oh, we need one of these in our catalog? Were you there for someone's career to look good? Or are you absolutely essential for their success? Don't confuse big name company being interested in you with a potential liquidity event most of these partnerships fail. And one that isn't intuitively obvious is that great person who you're dealing with in that large company, the odds are in 15 months, they're no longer in that job. Because if their career is heading in the right direction, they're going to be promoted or moved to another job or another division or another location. And therefore, the person who is passionate about your relationship is now gone. So if there's no underlying rationale, if there's no real what's in it for them, the churn in partners and strategies or personnel might put your company out of business and they'll never notice the difference. You were just a short-term play for whoever was in the job. And if this wasn't important to their company, though it might have been essential to yours, that deal is over even though you might have a contract. The other thing startups worry about is intellectual property issues. Typically not much of an issue in the United States. Typically a very, 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 more various uncertainty here, important issue in dealing with China. Intellectual property and, and the uh, uh, rule of law for trade and trademarks and IP is not quite the same in the U.S. as it is in China, Russia, India, and other developing nations. You should make sure that you're not dealing with IP issues in these countries as you would in the U.S. Finally, these deals are difficult to unwind or end. This might have looked like a great idea when you were a struggling startup. 18 months later, when your revenue's rolling in, you realize that you gave these large companies or these joint ventures or these strategic partners resources or assets or, or other things you never would have done two years later. And so really think through what happens two years from now.